Hello, welcome to the A to Z YouTube channel. My name is Toby Allen. I'm the A in A to Z. I'm in charge of engineering, producing and songwriting. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Hertz drums. It's uh, one that a lot of people have asked for. In the drum library tier list video, there were quite a number of comments from people saying that they wanted to hear what I thought of Hertz drums. So figured we'd give it a go. Um, I don't know whether this necessarily is counted as a sponsored video or not. Uh, Hertz haven't per se asked me to make a video about these. However, I did very cheekily and kind of flippantly say, if someone wants to give me a copy of Hertz drums, I will make a video. And then Hertz hit me up and said, do you want our drums? So reading between the lines, I think probably they do want me to make this video. <laughs> but um, so make of that what you will. However, I will say that uh, everything I'm saying in here is entirely my own opinion. They've not told me what to say or anything like that. And um, if I'm completely honest, uh, it took me a little while longer to make this video than I initially anticipated simply because I wasn't initially a fan. And I feel like there's probably a few people who are of the same where they've kind of like just scratched the surface of it and thought, hmm, not a huge fan. However, however, um, putting some time in to actually learn all of the ins and outs of the plugin and actually reading the manual and checking out all of the details and little features and stuff that are hidden away in it i have turned completely come around and I'm really enjoying it and i'm hoping that i can shed some light on some of the really cool parts about hertz drums which will make you realize that actually there's a lot of thought and work gone into this. My friend Kiko over at True North Audio, check them out if you haven't done so already. After I told him about some of the stuff that you can do with this, he said, finally, a drum library, which actually is thought out the way a drummer would think it out. <laughs> so let's actually have a look into what go what Hertz is all about. Um, I'm gonna show you the features, some of the sounds, um, and some of the really cool stuff. If you've already got Hertz drums and you're wanting to just check out the new expansion, then have a look in the timeline below. I will timestamp where I'm actually gonna be talking about the new pack. Uh, I want to go in the ins and outs of the program itself first, uh, but if you if you, you knew it and if you know it and love it and are using it already, then you can probably skip most of what I'm going to be talking about. However, if you do stick around, you may find some features that you didn't know about. So I'm going to very quickly go through the interface on the uh, plugin itself. We've got the mixer up here, so when you click on that, that brings up your mixer at the bottom, so you can dial in and pan and everything with your uh, drums. You can actually group things as well and then you can change just the, the group. So on here, you can see we've got all of the symbols listed separately. But if you go into your groups, you can then just do all the symbols as one go. And same with the toms, you can drag all the toms in one go, or you can do them individually over here. If we click on the lib sampler button, then we get to choose which sample uh, we are using for each element of the kit. So right here, we're looking at the kick. There's 20 different kicks, and for each of those different kicks, there are three different microphones. Now, according to the information that was given to me from Hertz, uh, mic A refers to Shure mics, mic B refers to Beardynamic mics, and C is a DPA mic. Um, I might be misunderstanding that. It might be that that was just referring to the snares uh, and that there's something different going on with the kicks and maybe something different going on with the toms, but um, that's kind of how, <laughs> how I understood it. I could be completely wrong on that. Anyway, so if we look at these here, we're basically the first five, these are the Metal Unlimited, the next five are from the white pack. The next five are from the red pack. And the next five are from the blue pack. So that's that's for the four packs represented. I like the way they've got the white and the gray there that kind of help you to see the where the dividing line is between the different packs. Uh, it feels to me, I mean, I could be, could be completely wrong, but if you were to compare this to GGD, then the white ones are kind of modern and massive kind of sound. The red ones are kind of an invasion kind of sound and blue is more sort of rock. Um, and sort of classic metal kind of sounds. The Metal Unlimited is a completely different animal entirely. And uh, we can come back to that later on. And if we go to the, the snare again, there's 20 different snares, three different mics for each snare. So if we look, for example, at snare one, that's what it sounds like with the Shaw. That's what it sounds like with the Beryl Dynamic. 
And that's what it sounds like with the DPA. And that's the same with all of these snares. So you can go. So we get this one here, the floater. <laughs> so I would probably go with that because that sounds great. So then you right click on it to select it. And then it's the same with all of the rest of the things on here. So you can use your hi-hat and you've got four different hi-hats to choose from, one from each pack. You go to the China, you've got um, eight different Chinas to choose from, and then three different spot mics on them. You get your splash, again, three different spot mics, uh, 12 different options. Even the cowbell, you've got eight different options. That includes the tambourine as well, so tambourine and cowbell. You can also load up, uh, go to load instrument, you can drag in a one shot and change out that instead as well. Now with the toms, you've basically got one variation on each tom for each of the, kit, of, each of the packs. So it's, you can see here there's five for each pack. So there's five Metal Unlimited, five white, five red, five blue. But that's the five toms on there. You've got three rack toms and two floor toms. That's what those are. So but you can change the microphones on those. So you can change out the microphones on the different toms um, across the entire kit. So then grooves. Grooves is kind of cool because you've got basically three different styles on here. Funk, New Metal and Rock. Then you've got the time signatures you can choose from as well. So with New Metal you can go 4-4. 78 tempo and then you click on this little grid here to select the kind of um, groove that you want it to have so for example we could have an intro when we press play so you've got very six different uh, intros for each of the uh, time signatures for each of the styles then you've got endings as well. You've got uh, the sort of general kind of beats and you can choose from like there's five, there's variations on here of like how much hi-hat there is, how much ride there is and how much mixed there is. And then there's five variations with each of those as well. You got some really cool kind of stuff on there. And then you've got some feels as well. And if you find something you like, you've got this little button here. You can then click and drag the MIDI into your session. So that's how the grooves works. Then the next thing you've got up here is the presets. Now because I've got the, the four different packs, I've got lots of presets to choose from. So within the blue, as I said, it's kind of rock, classic metal. Red is uh, kind of more modern metal. Um, tight, fast kind of stuff, I imagine, with a bit <laughs> funk. Or if you want something a bit drier as well. Uh, as like I say, I kind of associate in my head, like the red is kind of like invasion, if you want to GGDize it. Uh, white pack is uh, more like the progressive, modern metal, modern rock. Uh, and then the Hertz does something entirely differently. Uh, and again, I'll be coming back to that later on. So that's that. And then next we've got the outputs. So you can multi out the drums on here if you want to then put them into your DAW and process them all separately. You can do that. Next thing we have is the mapping. Now, mapping is very, very cool because there's a lot of mapping happening. So, for example, you press the info, you can, it actually shows you exactly what's going on here. So, for the, sna the snare, I think where some people are going wrong with, with Hertz and where, the, and where I was going wrong to begin with was that uh, I was basically just using the D1 for the snare. And if you are doing that, then it will sound robotic and it sounds almost one-shotty. But if you program it properly, you can see here you've got a different... Um, 
note for hitting with the right hand and then another one with the left hand then you've got rim shot right hand rim shot left hand shallow hit right hand shallow hit left hand cross sticks then you've got the controls here if you're setting up with an e-kit so let me just very quickly show you what i mean by how this sounds so what i have here is the first section here that's looped i've got to program the way i would normally program something like uh, a contact instrument like ggd or crim or like easy drum or something like that where it's just all the kicks are c1 and all the the snares are d1 and with hertz that sounds like this sounds kind of robotic doesn't sound very realistic. And obviously, if you're uh, programming this and you want to go and humanize those, move the uh, the timings and the velocities and stuff. But um, what I want to show you is how good it sounds when you program it with the different articulations before humanizing it. So what we've got here, these are right foot kicks. These are left foot kicks. And then we've got right hand snare, left hand snare, right hand rim shot and then uh, right hand and left hand shallow hits and then when they play that this is without any humanization without going in and changing the velocities or anything this is literally just before humanizing it sounds like this do you notice it sounds a lot more realistic so if it loop both sections one after the other And if you went in and changed the velocities and stuff, then it'll be even more real sounding. And there's a, I'm going to put a screenshot here of uh, a little graph that Hertz made to show you what um, velocities to use in what situations and what scenarios, uh, which makes life a lot easier. So you can figure out, okay, so these are eighth notes. I want the velocity here. Or these are sixteenth notes. I want the velocity here. That makes it so much easier to work out exactly where you want your velocities to go. And I think that's a really useful tool for them to provide. And then a similar thing here as well with the with the toms. So again, this is how you would program toms normally. You've got one note for each tom, but with Hertz, you've got separate notes for the left and right hits. And that's so the you can hear the differences between those like this. Again, that makes a big difference to my ears and it'll make even more of a difference if you go in and adjust the velocities and the timing and everything as well to make it even more human-like. If we go back to the mapping, uh, we can see there you've got center sign and LR on those, on all of the toms. The hi-hats have quite a few options for how open it is and how closed it is as well. And what's very cool, and I haven't seen on another library before, another function that you have, another way of um, opening and closing the hi-hat so again this is kind of the more normal kind of way where you have a different note for each amount of the hi-hat being open and it sounds like this the only thing is with this is that you do need to program in pedals if you want it to be closed otherwise you get sometimes get an overlap where the open uh, hi-hat sound is still playing when you play a closed hi-hat sound which obviously doesn't happen in real life so you need to put in the note to close the pedal but then the other option you've got here as well is that you can actually program in if you use this note here which in the Hertz drums let's say um, G sharp minus one and that is the zone one open close g sharp minus one you see that and if you hit this one and then you can use modulation midi control to control how open it is so watch this notice that i'm just playing one note and the note isn't changing only the modulation is changing that is really cool so you can essentially just like program hi-hats all the way through the song um, and then you can use the modulation wheel to adjust how open they are which is kind of it gives you a little bit more control a bit more makes it a bit more fun makes it um, easier i think as well to to program uh, if you're using a keyboard and you've got a midi con you've got a modulation controller on the on the midi keyboard then that makes it great you can move that wheel up and down while you're 
programming in the hi-hats so i think that's really cool the other thing you got here on the mapping page is you can if you unlock the trim knobs you can adjust the volume of each articulation so if you want for example the left hits on your snare to sound much quieter than the right hits you can do that um or you can do it the other way around you know if you alt click on any of the knobs it returns back to normal and even with uh, the hi-hat where are they there's hi-hat so you can have like some of the more open hits are louder than some of the, the more close hits and ride bells are much louder than ride bows for example um there's lots of options uh, and the fact that you can actually change those individually is just nice i mean just, i can't think of really a scenario where i'm going to want to do that very often but the fact that you are able to it's right there that's really cool so then we've got the settings and um, this is where you, you load up the, the you load in the files to show hertz where the libraries are stored i recommend very strongly that you use an ssd and not a hard drive i've had some issues where this was uh, kind of stuttering and struggling to keep up because the files are on a hard drive so definitely you want to put those on an ssd then if you've got midi libraries those will go in there as well now this high performance low performance and medium performance it actually threw me the wording of it threw me a little bit so basically medium performance is the default setting if you go to low performance i thought that meant your computer is performing lower because there's more samples being loaded that's not correct it's the plugin itself is performing lower with basically half the amount of samples are loaded up so if you're on medium you get the default number of samples if you're on uh, low performance you have half the number of samples loaded up if you go to high performance you've got double the amount of samples loaded up so if you've got a computer that is slow and is only struggling to get this to work well when you're programming things you could switch over to low performance do your programming get it sound how you want it to and then you can switch over to high performance and print your tracks in place and that will give you the full benefit of all of those samples which are in the library that's a really useful feature then you've got humanized here which just makes some adjustments to your um, programming to make it sound a bit more humanized and you've got a stereo flip button here as well so that lets you choose between audience perspective or drummer's perspective so there's I was, different people have got different ideas about what they like um, personally i like drummer's perspective on a studio recording and audience perspective on a live recording but different bands like things differently different uh, producers and engineers like to do things differently so the options there <laughs> all right if we look at here the instruments section of the plugin uh, you've got up here the name of what you've got selected at the time and um, you've got the you can choose the microphones you can adjust the pitch and if we solo the snare you can hear the difference between the mics then you've got the overhead you've got a sub mic and the effects this is your processing and any additional samples so with um, some of these presets and some of these settings you have in addition to the direct microphone and everything else you've got additional samples which are actually blended in with it and that is controlled with the effects as well as the processing then you've got the ability here to adjust between uh, look a little pad to draw around um, how much room and reverb you're using You've got the velocity controls here. So if you go over to the dynamic, it'll actually change the dynamic curve. Um, you can make it more or less dynamic. Then you've got uh, minimum velocity and maximum velocity, which can be useful if you don't want things, your low velocities to go to sort of ghost note sounding. You can revert, reverse. Wow, <laughs> that is wild. I can't say I can think of too many occasions where that's going to be useful, but I guess actually if we go into here and go to automation, wow, is all I can say. <laughs> there we go. So you can actually, you can, you could automate that reverse button. So you could have it like at the start of a song, 
first hit in the song is a reverse cymbal and then after that it switches around so that it's the right way around for the rest of the song that could be really cool <laughs> yeah that's that's wild and also let I me mean, look at the amount of automation there is in options in here look at this look i mean this whole page is just china one and now we're on china 11. wow I That is a lot. Basically, every single function in the entire plugin has automation enable, uh, available for it. So that is absolutely bonkers. And I've just crashed my computer, I think. <laughs> so yeah, okay, that is, that's amazing. Uh, and then you can adjust your ASDR here as well. Um, and you can actually adjust it per microphone, per output. So, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of, of functions that you can do in there. Now, what I'm going to talk now about the new pack, the Metal Unlimited pack, because that does something a little bit different, and you can see that reflected in the names of the presets. So, with the others, you've got kind of like a genre-based preset names. In Hertz Metal Unlimited, you've got base, five basics, you've got 15 metal kits, and five snap kits. Now, the basic kits are just raw samples with no EQ and no compression, just how they were recorded out of a Neve console at Hertz Studio. So let's click basic kit one and show you how that sounds. So if you wanted to just have like a, a real sounding kit without any sort of messing around and you want to do all the mixing yourself, then that's that's the way to go. And you can see here that the FX dial is turned all the way down because this preset has all of the extra samples, the extra processing, everything turned off. If you go to the metal kits, those are the raw sounds mixed with the samples and the effects and things. So I was going to pick one at random, Metal Kit 7. Just wait for that to load. So you can hear that sounds a bit more bombastic, a bit more quote unquote mix ready than the, the basic kits did. Now what's really cool as well is that lastly you have the snap kits, which is the reverse of the basic kits. These ones is just the processing and just the, sam the additional samples and no raw sounds. On its own, it sounds really odd and you think this doesn't sound like a drum kit that I'm gonna use in a, in a, in a song. So if we load up snap kit 04, for example, so that kick, are you going to want to use that? <laughs> so that is not designed to be used on its own. This is designed to go with, uh, to layer on top of either a real live kit, or if you've got a library with a different company that uh, sounds very dry and kind of boring, and you want it to sound more, um, bombastic and more ready to go into a, a live mix then you layer this on top so it's really really good for sort of franken kissing which is something i really enjoy doing um like you know blending different libraries together so that's the purpose of the snap kit presets is to layer them in with another library or with live drums so I think that is really, really cool, especially the fact that you can, I mean, obviously you can use something like Trigger from uh, Stephen Slate to layer like additional samples on top of live. But uh, another option is this, because the great thing is with this as well is that you could potentially use this with like the symbols and stuff. So if you've got a live recording and you then program that into MIDI or even use something like uh, Slate Trigger or uh, Sonox Drumgate, to generate the MIDI or even Logic, you know, Logic's got the ability to do that built in as well. You can generate the MIDI and then feed that into Hertz and then layer that on top of the live drums and you've got a real kind of big sounding kit, um, which is, you know, ready to, to be mixed. So that, that, you know, that's really cool. I think that's a really awesome feature and just really sort of well thought out thing.
Okay, so the other thing we, we want to talk about with Metal Unlimited, we mentioned already that each of the SIM samples has its own microphone, so you can go A, B, or C on any of the snares or the toms or the kicks or whatever. If we, let's go to the snare for example, what's really cool here is that you've also got, for each of those microphones, you have a different set of processing and a different set of additional samples blended in. But you can select the raw microphones of A, for example, and the effects and the, the additional samples of C, for example. And you do that by right clicking. So if we hit the snare, that's A raw samples and A snap samples. If I right click C, now we click the snare. That's your raw samples of A and your snap samples of C. And if you just, then we can click on B and then that changes it all back. So they're both to B. If I left click C and right click A, we've now got the opposite of what we had a minute ago. So you can actually mix and match within the plugin as well. So let's have a quick listen to this setting that's on here. Let's have a quick listen to some of the beats on the groove player. So I think it sounds really good. I think as I said the controls uh, and the different features that are kind of hidden away in there are really, really good and really killer. And you can get some really awesome and realistic sounding drums out of this library. I do think that you need gonna need to spend a little bit more time in the programming of these drums to make them sound really great. But I think that time, extra time that you put into them is worth it because we, I showed you that some, the example of the snare hits. Uh, that was that was mind blowing for me when I first tried that. I feel almost like in some ways it would take me longer with um, a different kind of library because I'd have to be tweaking the velocities and and everything more to try and sound make it sound more human humanized. But with this, you know, you you can get it sounding humanized without before you even get get involved in the velocities. And then once you do that, it just sounds really really good. So. I, I really I really recommend this one. I think it's really good. I say it took me a little while to, to kind of come around to to liking it because I had to really play with it first. And I definitely recommend if you have the Hertz libraries already, definitely put them time into to learning all the different features and getting those snare articulations right. I think my only gripe is, uh, if that's the right word, is that you've got a, the viewy for the drums is kind of a bit uh too consistent so i would like it i mean because we've got the different colors the names of the different libraries of different colors so i think it'd be really cool if like for example you had a white kick then the kick goes white and if you had a red snare then the snare would be red and uh, rather than just being the same color all the time but it's just a kind of nitpicking thing i guess and uh, you've got this this button over here the question with for the help you can press that and it will it takes you to this page which gives you a bunch of tutorials so you've got videos on each section of the uh, the plugin to show you how to use it uh, i just you know just i think that's really good really good you've just like oh no what is it i mean, when i was making this video i was like what's the sub and i clicked the question mark and it went over to the video and i was able to watch the video on this section of the plugin and they told me hey, there's a sub mic. I wasn't sure that it meant like sub mix or sub bus or, or something. So I wanted to make sure so I got it right when I was when I was telling you guys. Um, and I just think that was really great. And we've got there's controls for everything. Uh, I think this is like one of the most advanced drum libraries I've, I've played with. The only other library I can think of that has the same similar sort of amount of tweaking and, and controls and stuff is the, the Kurt Ballou one. Because I mean, I'm thinking specifically of the the blend, the bleed dial, so you can control exactly how much bleed comes through each microphone, which is kind of wild. Um, but it doesn't have the like the left right snare and then left right rim and then left right uh, shallow and stuff that you've got on this one. So 
yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's complex, but in, in its own different way. I put the question on Facebook to ask if anyone had any questions about what they want me to answer about Hertz drums on this video. And um, Facebook didn't disappoint. We've got, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me no more. Does it hurt when you play them? And did it hurt when I fell from heaven? So thanks guys, some brilliant questions. So what did you think of this library? Do you think it sounds good? Do you think that the uh, the controls are pretty pretty awesome? The, the What I showed with the modulation on the hi-hat, you can actually do on the snare as well. So you can use modulation wheel to change between the articulations on the snare rather than using different notes. So that's kind of cool as well. Um, do you think that is a cool feature? Or do you think that's a waste of time? Do you like the sound of the Hertz drums? I think what I need to do is maybe do a full song at some point using this to kind of really demonstrate it. I wanted to talk about the features of it rather than uh, it actually being in a song setting. So maybe I'll do that in the future as well. If you've got any other thoughts or comments, obviously leave those below. If you've got any other ideas of drum libraries I should try out, um, then put that in the comments as well and I'll see if I can get those on the channel. <laughs> and I hear the subscribe button is evil. It must be punished. So make sure you whip that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.